everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Uh, it's been, well, zero days since a Rebirth episode went live. But nine days since I played. I was away in Toronto. I was hanging out with Michael A. L. Fox for a while. For those of you, I believe I'm playing Maggie right, by the way. Like, I just checked uh, the last video that was uploaded, and I think it was an Isaac run. Um, E1QLFGQT. Um, for those of you who are not uh, necessarily familiar with the geography of Canada, I'm not trying to uh, suggest that that makes you ignorant or anything like that. Let me just let's let's engage in the sharing of knowledge, shall we? Um, Vancouver and Toronto are not particularly close together, except on maybe like a global scale. It's uh, pretty much like a four, four and a half, five hour flight. As Quill said when I talked to him about it on Twitter, not that I haven't been to Toronto before, I'm actually, I grew up in that province, but anyway, um, Quill18, you know, the guy I do a lot of E4 stuff with, the strategy games YouTuber, says that people always ask him, like, hey, uh, do you live close to Toronto? Or, sorry, do you live close to Vancouver? And he says, well, actually, like, I live as far from Vancouver as Moscow is from Barcelona. So that, that puts it into some European-style context. Uh, I know that Russia is, of course, uh, larger than Canada, but anyway. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long trip. I've been away for a little while. I didn't play much Rebirth while I was uh, away. Normally I play Rebirth to, to pass the time on long flights, but instead I uh, was trying to program a calculator in Java, which actually ended up working out, but now what that means is I'm a little rusty. But I, I hope that I'm ready to go. Sometimes absence makes the, the fart grow fonder, sometimes absence makes the fart grow danker. And I don't mean it in like an internet, ooh, dank uh, meme reference. Instead, I mean it as, like, seriously, like, you know, the Merriam-Webster definition of, like, old and mildewy. It smells like it has a weight associated with it. You know what I mean. Little haunt. Little haunt, uh, beyond acceptable. Oh, good, a Skype message. I'm just gonna wait and see if the frame rate resolves itself, and it did indeed. I don't love that I did that, but I think that it was the right decision. I only had half the Spirit Heart available, so I was like, ah, we should try, see if there's anything in there, and then Yum Heart paid for us to go uh, into the blue fires, and we could have tried to walk diagonally between them. Freaking Michael Ale Fox was trying to tell me, oh, you can just walk between the blue fires. It's true, it is quite, like, fairly difficult, though, all things considered. Like, more power to you if you can do it consistently and get out without getting hurt and get what they give you without getting hurt. But uh, for me, you know, quality of life uh, concerns factor in at some point there. So I'm trying to just make sure that uh, we do manage to get a little haunt to do a little damage. It, you know, Monstro is a fairly mobile boss, so I don't think we're going to be able to get a, a whole heck of a lot of damage done with little haunt. Fear Shot, you know, it has its positives and negatives. I think it's largely uh, actually like a negative, for lack of a better word, tier effect or status effect. But it'll, it'll get the job done here. Sometimes it'll help us out at least. I can't believe I didn't get hit there, and we are already done with our first floor very quickly. I took experimental treatment, got some HP. I think maybe our damage is slightly compromised, but that's okay. Most important thing, gotta get this deal with the devil on this floor. It is the basement, so we're lucky enough to maybe be in an okay position there. Um, I think our shot speed maybe has gone up. Mostly, I, I, I want Little Haunt to get down there and start attacking these guys, because this is like the perfect enemy for Little Haunt to do something against, because they don't have that much HP, but... We also have to get close in order to get Little Haunt to aggro. But once it aggros, we should be in a pretty good spot. And maybe it can chain off of them, and it looks like that's exactly how that's gonna go. I'm gonna shoot these fires, because I'd really like to get some spirit hearts. Spiders, spiders are fine. Um, not really the be all end all in terms of what I was hoping for. Yet another Tinted Rock we can't open yet, but that's okay. How was Toronto? I can hear the, uh, the the commenters asking. After already saying, hey, you missed a Tinted Rock fuckboy, also you didn't go to the Womb 2 deal with the devil, even though it's always... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thank you for Fear Shot there. After I insulted it, it came back to help me out a great deal. Toronto was cool, man. Uh, I like I like the city. I will admit, I'm not trying to start any, uh, you know, cross-Canadian rivalry or anything like that. That could, that could be important. Aries probably won't be, but there's times when it can be. Toronto's cool, man. Um, I like Vancouver more, which is great because I live here. Which is, like, that's probably the better permutation to have it. But I know there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of people that enjoy, uh, that enjoy Toronto more. It's, it's a bigger city. Feels like it's got a little bit more sprawl, but it's also got cool stuff, man. Like, Harborfront is super cool, and Kensington Market's a cool area. It's got a CN Tower, which is taller than any building in Vancouver. Well, any building in Canada. Almost any building in the world. 
<laughs> there's like like three freestanding towers taller than it or something like that. So that's pretty cool. And also, we went to Canada's Wonderland. Vancouver doesn't really have a, a premier uh, amusement park. I go to amusement parks because my wife, you know, I'm assuming you're tangentially familiar with Kate, at least at this point. Kate loves amusement parks. They're her thing. I got lucky when we went to Japan. There's this uh, amusement park called Fuji Q. I forget the... I think it's like in this city called Kawaguchiko, which is kind of a small city. It's known for being close to Mount Fuji and also having this dope amusement park. And I was like, I'm scared shitless. I'm, I tend to be an anxious person, and I really dislike heights. Uh, I got over my latent fear of flying oh, after a couple of years of flying all the time. Not a problem now, but roller coasters still get me, man. But I, it was just me and her, and I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to go on these roller coasters that are ranked like, you know, the scariest, the scariest uh, roller coasters in the world. Um, although I will say America has some of the scariest roller coasters in the world as well. I'm not trying to take anything away from you guys if you're American and you're listening to this. Sweet, pretty fly. Um, and then it snowed. The good lord above opened up the clouds and poured snow down upon the roller coasters so that the theme park was closed and I got away with it. So I was like, ah shit, well we gotta, when we're in Toronto, we have to go to Canada's Wonderland because honestly, you're owed one. So we went to Canada's Wonderland, it was fun. You know, you face your fears, you, you get exhilarated. For me, ah, it sucked a little bit. Everyone's always, they try to tell you like, oh, don't worry about roller coasters, man. Roller coasters are safe. It's actually safer to be on the roller coaster than it is to be in the car on the way to where you, I'm gonna get both of these because we start with so much HP. You know, they, you know what they say, anyway. But it's like it's not that I'm actually worried about dying on the roller coaster. It's that I find heights very unpleasant, and it's hard to explain that to people. I'm like, you know, I don't really like heights. They're like, well, the roller coaster's not gonna drop you. I'm like, yeah, but I get this feeling in the pit of my stomach that I'm actually gonna die, and it's a complete loss of control. And I, uh, you know, I don't have a panic attack or anything like that. I'm not trying to say that, you know, I, I'm not trying to trivialize people who have real anxiety problems. But I just find it unpleasant. But then on the way down, it's pretty fun because you just go like, whoa. Anyway, oh, Black Candle, absolutely. How do I feel about this run so far? A pretty good spot. Got like no no supreme damage dealers. We got a lot of HP though. Um, good utility items, as I occasionally like, like to call them. You know, Black Candles are really good utility items. Sister Maggie, Brother Bobby, help us out a little bit. Um, as a little haunt is basically a utility item in my mind as well. Let's try to open this up. Might as well. Justice card. I think it's probably worth it. Um, I, I'm really envious, honestly, of people who like roller coasters, and I, I don't mean that uh, in like a, you know, some people are like, I wish I could be as stupid as you are to not be afraid. No, I don't mean it like that. I, I really, I really wish that uh, for me, going to an amusement park was not like an exercise in facing your fears. I wish it was more of a, like, I wish it was more enjoyable. I do find myself enjoying myself while I'm there, but the anxiety in the lead up uh, certainly takes a little bit away from the experience. It's not really excitement, it's more of like a low-level fear. Um, just I'm just not wired that way for one reason or another, you know? I could sit down and watch like, uh, I could watch, you know, Jodorowsky's Dune like 10 times in a row and some people would probably be like, that's boring as fuck. And I'm like, yeah, you know, different strokes for different folks, man. That's my amusement park. Right there, I'm taking way too much damage on this floor already. I am gonna do a little bit of exploration here. Hoping to find some tinted rocks, I suppose. I realize that we can get into uh, both our item room and our shop without having to spend a key. We might want to maybe use a key, sorry, not shop, the curse room uh, and item room without spending a key. We might want to use a key to get into our item room because we have seven keys and only three bombs. That was almost some bad damage there. Um, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We may not want to as well. You know, those are the two possibilities. I actually feel like um, this would be a really, really useful floor to get some extra damage on so if we can get a deal with the devil that would be real flipping nice why use two bombs this is a little bit of the rust still factoring in here uh, so now that I've used two bombs I'm actually gonna use my third one to try to get a little bit more out of this one maybe we'll get lucky we did not get lucky so now I need two bombs to actually be able to even uh, access this curse room without losing HP but if we lose our spirit heart it really doesn't matter if we lose HP to get into that room because uh, we uh, can just use the yum heart anyway, but I digress. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, we're just gonna kinda stay around this general area. Try not to get hit by the bullets in particular. The bombs uh, are unlikely to be as much of a concern. 
That's good. Spider bite is good. It kind of sucks that we have a uh, little haunt because it gives us a um, fear effect. Help. 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 We have uh, a fear effect, so the slow is not going to take precedent over it. Occasionally, we're going to miss out on it, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, I did just take a hit right there. Sorry, I got distracted for a second because Nick was tweeting me about freaking Demon's Crest. I don't know why this guy's always talking about Demon's Crest. He's obsessed with getting me to try games. I don't get it, man. It's like when I was in high school, I was that guy. I would always be like, hey, check it out. I discovered th this album. And by discovered, I mean, you know, I went to Pitchfork Media and looked at, like, their best of this year list and then listened to it and was like, independently speaking, this is really good. Like, I've, I've got great taste. And then I would share it with people. And I had, like, a compulsion to share it. I just don't get it now as an adult, but maybe I'm, I'm missing out. I'm not trying to say that Nick's development has been arrested or anything like that. Rather, I'm just like, I don't really want to play Demon's Crest. And he's like, nah, dog. I'm not going to stop bugging you play, about playing Demon's Crest and Lost Planet 2. Like, I could be I could be doing other stuff with my time, man. We don't have to, we don't have to play, you know, 15-year-old games that are only okay or only half-decent. We could play brand new games that are half decent, or 15 year old games that are incredible. Like, that, it's a little bit lower on my list. I know Lost Planet, by the way, Lost Planet 2 especially, is not 15 years old. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there is that I, I don't understand the reasoning of why he, uh, why he likes the, likes to talk to me about Demon's Crest so much. You know what I think it is? Here's my theory, is that Nick doesn't actually want me to play Demon's Crest. Nick wants to influence me to play Demon's Crest because of what that will affirm for him as like a recommendation engine or something like that. That's my theory is that he doesn't want me to play Demon's Crest any more than he wants me to play anything else as long as he is the one that has recommended it. That's my... That's my Psych 101 on that one. So maybe I should just do it because then, you know, if I put in an hour of it, maybe I'll enjoy it. But also, maybe he'll get off my back, or maybe it'll just encourage him more. I mean, that's the part that scares me. So we did not get a deal with the devil here, but I'm relatively pleased. Um, yeah, that sucks. I'm relatively pleased with my performance because we actually did uh, manage to not take red hard damage. So we've got a pretty good chance of getting a deal with the devil. We didn't get a deal with the devil, so be it. You know, it happens. Uh, let's do some more exploration because I would... Might as well use that. I would like to... Uh, I guess go to the second secret room? I'd like to go to the secret room as well. I, I used my bombs very inefficiently on this floor, made some mistakes. By the way, thank you to everyone who gave... Oh, there's our red heart damage. But thank you to everyone who gave feedback about the way you want to see uh, things go. Maybe we'll do like one more character rotation, and if the, the streak is not looking so hot on that, we'll go back to Eden runs. I, I do like Eden runs uh, a ton. And I think, like, my ideal thing, like my ideal playstyle would be all Eden all the time. But I did, I encountered some pretty shitty, like, RNG on Eden and was like, you know what, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I gotta, I gotta develop my, uh, my basic skills more to get back to that point. Right now, I'm not putting any pressure on myself to, to win the streak or anything like that. You know, to get an 80 streak. Mostly, I'm just worried about, uh, having good runs, playing better, and, and getting myself back in the groove. Because I'm not expecting to come back from, uh... A little time away and necessarily blow the doors off, you know, right away. But we'll, we'll see. It would be nice if we could do it, I suppose. This is a very big floor for us. We're just gonna <laughs> keep moving ourselves around because these guys are dangerous. But um, this is a, a very big floor for us because if we can get a deal with the devil on this floor... Well, let me, let's me let phrase it in the, the exclusionary way first. If we don't get a deal with the devil on this floor, it could cause us some problems. Next floor, we can start to encounter some really tricky enemies. Um, we may have lost just one deal with the devil on the on the run, absolutely. You know, like, by missing this one, we're, we get off-center, and then we end up losing uh, the a possibility of having one that we would have had, just a, on a quantifiable scale. Um, let's go check out our double key room. I think it's probably worth it. Three keys for two keys. For that eternal heart, and then also one more key on top gave us uh, infamy. I think that definitely works out. Uh, we do want to make sure we don't forget about that eternal heart. I think there's no better time for us to fight the boss, honestly. Mega Fatty is uh, tanky. Tanky can be tough. We gotta pretty much get through this without taking damage if we want to. Well, guaranteed we gotta get through this without taking damage if we want to make sure that we can have a chance to get uh, the deal with the devil on this one. Yeah. So if we end up not getting a deal with the devil here, we should have a, a really good chance at our next floor, which is really what we have to focus on, is making sure that we, uh... 
Oh, there we go. But really, what we have to focus on is making sure that we, uh... Maybe buy some Spirit Hearts, stock up. If I'd only lost, like, two less Spirit Hearts, or let's say gotten hit three less times on the last floor, that would have been so much better for our overall standing on this run, because... Like, really, one Spirit Heart makes all the difference right now in this fight against Mega Fatty. I mean, we shouldn't need... To, well, we shouldn't need a Spirit Heart against Mega Fatty, but it's pretty easy to take damage against Mega Fatty as well, you know? Just because of the sheer length of time the fight takes. Let's not forget to move. That was so close. We made it. We got a speed upgrade, which I think is actually very useful as Maggie. And uh, we're going to take Dead Cat Brimstone. Absolutely no questions asked. That's going to make this run probably very, very simple. And I am completely 100% okay with that. I, in a way, that's already, like, more skill on that Mega Fatty fight than you see on the average Northern Line run, if I'm being 100% honest. Like, that was a, a fairly real skill check, in, uh, skill check against Mega Fatty there that actually, thankfully, ended up working out quite nicely for us. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. And honestly, Wooden Spoon coming along with it is great. And this is the perfect kind of setup to be uh, when you're on a... A, a run where you're basically just trying to warm up again, you know, like you're, you're a little out of practice. Small skill check followed by a, a huge advantage is uh, a big help. So our damage uh, kind of sucks, I'll admit. Rate of fire is also quite poor, so just our DPS in general is a little bit on the, the shitty side, but um, we can work through that, we can, we can work through that. Emperor card, very useful. Uh, Yum Heart, not so much, but since we are on the caves too, I don't really want to get rid of uh, the opportunity to get something from Pandora's box here. So I'm thinking it, maybe if we can get it, we'll... Uh, well, let's just see what we get here first before we get too out of shape here. That's good. We got uh, two Spirit Hearts and Tears Up. That's fine. If we get um, four more cents, I might like to pick up Blue Candle, but I also sort of feel like Blue Candle and uh, Brimstone is a little bit of a weird combination because you don't really find yourself using blue candle as much as you might if you had regular tears because the time that you spend using blue candle cannot be used to charge brimstone so uh they they kind of are exclusionary towards one another in a, in a weird way that you might not expect if you don't really think about it, or if you haven't really used it and even i'm still guilty of being like "Ooh, that's a good item let's pick it up right away um blue candle that is but i honestly think that it's not necessarily the best pickup with uh with brimstone i don't think that this is a revolutionary thing for me to be saying also like I I do want to just say that I'm sure that this is probably something that is pretty easy to divine but whenever I independently come to a conclusion myself it's amazing you know if you get told anything that's one thing but if you can figure it out for yourself that it means a little bit more I think it's got a little sentimental value that discovery does that discovery does okay let's not forget about the uh, eternal heart back there you want safety Wait a minute, we didn't even have to pay in that double key room. We didn't pay an extra key for the Master of Unlocking. Because of Master of Unlocking. I get it now. Okay, good. Um, I think we want uh, Master of Unlocking instead of Callus. You never know when Blank Card Yara Rune is going to show up. And this uh, allows us to open any amount of chests that we would like to, which is valuable. I would love it if somehow this room just dropped Goathead to finish it off. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm somewhat pessimistic about this, but... Did, I would be happy. I am happy, by the way, that we got a little uh, chub. Just one of those items. It's like the exact opposite of what I was talking about with Blue Candle. It's synergistic with Little Brimstone because usually you're firing straight. With, well, I mean, Brimstone is always firing straight, but you're trying to like fire at a direct line of sight with with whatever you're fighting against, um, and that's how Little Chub actually manages to do damage. So it's an important thing to have in that situation. Let's not forget this Eternal Heart. Uh, well, not important, but helpful. Yeah, good floor. Very, very good floor. This floor took us from a potentially dangerous position into a not really dangerous position at all, which is really good. And, you know, we've got a guppy chance. Any damage upgrades are substantially more important based on that. Look, this is not necessarily the best call, but I do like doing this to not only save time, but also uh, save potential damage. Mostly, I just, it's kind of cheeky, so I like it, but anyway. Um, yeah, we're, we're probably going to win with our exact loadout right now, but if we can just pick up other guppy items or uh, damage upgrades, then pretty much it's, it's relatively set in stone, honestly. 
Now, we gotta be careful because we have two different tier effects that both, um... Cause bosses when they jump to do weird shit. Slow causes them to not jump as far. Fear causes them to, like, jump in place. So we just gotta be... We gotta keep our wits about us is the way that I would describe it here. It's like we got, uh, you know... A, it's a sleeping pill vodka cocktail or something like that. You know, they're both depressants. So you gotta be careful. And, like, just don't even be careful. Just don't do that drink that I suggested. Uh, you know, you're, you're gonna be in for a bad time. That's real bad for your brain. Uh, and every other, you know, organ system in your body. Um, I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, slow plus fear really puts us on quite that same level of danger. But, you know, it's, it's a similar principle, I guess, is what I was trying to get at. So that's usually going to be a secret room there. I do want to go to the shop. We probably should. I mean, we have six keys. I might actually like to fight greed at this point. Good triple shot. So this will make our rate of fire much longer. But we already got a tears upgrade, so it's actually going to be uh, surmountable. It would be the way that I would choose to describe it. And uh, it's going to really, really increase our damage. Especially if we can catch uh, one... Oh, I shouldn't have canceled that one. If we can catch one enemy in the uh, in all three beams, or even two beams, that nickel is going to be very helpful. Also makes strafing, I think, a little bit better, because they'll be in the effective uh, kind of damage zone for longer. Beautiful. This is going to be tough. Oh, maybe it's not going to be that tough. I didn't realize that we actually charged a little faster than I thought. And I do not see a Tinted Rock in there, much to my chagrin. Just waiting until we got a full charge, because, oh, so I can waste it against these guys. No problem. And now, like, that, that triple shot is really uh, a pretty stellar pickup for us. I think we're probably in the zone where I would consider this game to be completely won. So thank you! Thank you, uh, Isaac, for helping me out here and recognizing it's been a little while since I played you. I appreciate it. Thanks for your help. Oh, yeah, that was a very smart idea there. That ended up not being worth it at all. Until it completely was. Also, did I... Am I crazy? Or did were some of those spirit hearts double pickups? I had like one spirit heart. And I picked up six and... Well, I guess it was probably seven. And then I lost one. Or half of one for walking out. Something doesn't seem right there. Does Ares... Doubles? No. This makes no sense. Uh, well, that's one of those things where, you know, there was that time where I, like, picked up a penny and it gave me, like, six cents or something like that, and it turned out there was a nickel that was occluded by the, uh, the arts from the penny. Like, they were stacked on top of one another in-game. Maybe that's what happened there, but I think it's one of those things where I'm gonna have to wait for commenters to be like, here's what happened, and then I'll be like, oh, you know what, that makes sense, but I've never seen that before. Uh, that was very strange, I think. We might as well get Nun's Habit. I mean, I haven't been particularly kind to our donation machine here, but it's not the end of the world either way, honestly. It's been a little bit of a slow run, and we'll probably speed up as we go along, just because we're doing so much damage relative to what we were doing earlier. I would have thought that they would all be dead. Instead, we killed none of them! That's amazing! Okay, let's get out of here. That spirit art thing is still weirding me out a little bit, but hey, at least it's not like, you know, you picked up four, but actually it gave you one. Instead, we picked up four, it gave us like seven. Fine by me. Can't get in there because of the uh, eternal heart that I picked up a couple floors ago. I guess it's not directly as a result of that eternal heart. You get the idea. Ooh, made it. Bad trip. Uh, uh, not the best pill in the game until it is, and it completely saves your run, of course. And we can get both of these guys. I know it for a fact. Well, Sister Maggie, maybe. Little Chub, Little Chub, thank you. We will come in here. Ah, uh, this is exactly what we needed. Honestly, like, our damage is still pretty lacking, so... That was a great Little Chub shot. Completely accidental, but great nonetheless. To pick up um, the mark on this one was awesome. I didn't look to see if that gave us two Spirit Hearts. That one only gave us one. Maybe I had more Spirit Hearts than I thought, and I just had a little bit of a brain fart there. It's conceivable. It's happened before. Could have just been confused. Don't, uh, explain in glitches what can be explained in, like, a human programming error. This is good. Always on sixth payout. 
We get some... Oh, what? I thought that was six. That might have only been five now that I think about it, though. A little rusty on that, for sure. Telepills. Second secret room, Telepills is a pretty good turnout, even, or pretty good uh, result, even if it didn't end up, like, explicitly working out for us there. At least, you know, indirectly, we've saved the bomb. Okay, don't, don't go anywhere. I really thought we'd get both. There we go. Um, I was not thinking straight when I came into this room. Good. Use Yum Heart. No reason to use Yum Heart a second time just yet. I would like to maybe donate the rest of our money to our donation machine. It's been a principal part of this run so far. And actually, you know what? We probably should go back to the boss trap room as well, now that I think about it. So this is not good practice, but I'm going to play this guy twice, losing half a spirit heart just to get that HP back. Hoping that we can get a payout a little faster here. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, even though I know there's a battery in the previous room. Just because I had a good feeling that maybe something would be around the corner relatively quickly. So now we've got uh, speed plus damage. Speed is still integral. Um, the, the damage, nice. Actually, the damage probably more integral, but the speed is also... It, it, it feels like it's more impactful right away because of the fact that I'm moving so freaking fast. So there is that. Uh, I do want to go to the boss trap room now that we can afford to go to the boss trap room easily. And growth hormones is so good that this is uh, a really, really nice setup for us. One guppy item would make it all worthwhile. No guppy items, but on the bright side, uh, it's definitely... Oh, that was extremely stupid. Definitely we got some spirit hearts. Loki? It is Loki. Okay, I feel good that I at least got that one right. Um, what else would I like to see on this run? Honestly, right now, it's... It's pretty much set. I would love to get the guppy items, of course. Infestation 2 would also be awesome. We've got a lot of familiars and followers, so a, a BFF's pickup would be great, but mostly I'm hoping to get a chance to donate our money, just so... You know, I, I mean, you, you can't keep borrowing, you, you know? You gotta, you gotta pay back your debts at some point, and we, we've taken out a lot of debts from that donation machine, so... We should, uh, we should be responsible adults and, and pay back our, uh, our liens here, if you know what I mean. Our dues are in arrears. Dad's key? Yes. This is another thing that is good to pick up because it does give us a chance to fight Mega Satan. And honestly, I think on this run, we've got a great ability to do so. So why not take advantage of it? it it's kind of stop being a warm-up, I guess, if we're going to fight Mega Satan. Not that he's the most difficult enemy in the game or anything like that. Well, I mean, actually, objectively, might be the most difficult enemy in the game. Doesn't look like we'll be able to pay, uh, pay up here, unfortunately. If I were a secret room, would I be here? Yeah, might as well try to use Dad's key effectively like that. Ended up being well worth it. <laughs> if I was a gorilla, na 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 na, I'd eat me a banana, na 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 na. I'd live in the treetops and swing on a vine. That was not very good. One thing's for sure, I would love ya. Da 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 da. Boom boom. Okay, that really want to get up close and personal. Not up close enough to get our, um, to get hurt by the eye, the, the freaking, uh, arms, but up close a little bit for sure. We'll take, let's be smart here, we'll take the Polaroid on this one, and then, yeah, Guppy's Paw, absolutely. Might as well put ourselves in permanent, uh, Polaroid invincibility after that point. I thought maybe that might be useful to get into Boss Rush, but I keep forgetting, like, I've tested that so many times, but I always forget. All right, womb one. With a bad trip pill that is now effectively worthless, but let's just not lose enough spirit hearts to make it uh, relevant at all. Little haunt's gonna get that one. Hopefully in time. Thank you. Feels weird having still what is a slightly underpowered version of Brimstone, but I guess I really should not be complaining. If I can complain about one thing, what I would complain about is the fact that this run might be giving me unrealistic expectations for my next run, which will probably come, like, right after this. You gotta check this stuff when you're one guppy item away, of course. Now we have, uh, guppy. So even though we lost what I would consider to be not an insignificant amount of HP to go into that curse room, it was, of course it was 110% worthy. You don't need me to, to tell you that. We did open this room. Dad's key doesn't open any other secret rooms adjacent to the secret room. That seems strange to me. Bloody Penny can be useful, but is not immediately important to us. You know what freaked me out, man? Uh, well, not freaked me out. You know what was strange to me, and thus a good topic of conversation? Uh, it was the fact that while we were in Canada's Wonderland in Toronto, 
And it's not, I know it's a stupid name for an amusement park, okay? But we got a sense of national pride about it because it's the best amusement park in the goddamn country. But anyway, um, I didn't realize they still had, like, Midway games. And I don't mean, like, NBA Jam or Smash TV, you know, like, on the Midway, they have, uh, like, the strength testing game, and then, like, uh, what are the other ones? Like, shoot a basketball into the soup, win a prize game. I didn't realize those things were still things. I thought those had been, uh, you know, relegated to, to obscurity. Also, I realized that amusement parks are a freaking scam, man. You pay like $60 to get into the amusement park. As soon as you walk in, they're like, by the way, you want to play this Midway game? It's $5 a play. Yo, that's ridiculous, dog. We shouldn't be, well, maybe it's not fair to say we shouldn't be, but we, if we're going to be mad at uh, mobile game manufacturers for nickel and diamond, yo, we should be talking about this $5 a freaking play to shoot a basketball into a net. You know, you could buy a freaking basketball net for like 60, 70 bucks. You're going to shoot into it probably a whole a hell of a lot more than 12 times. Hopefully, anyway. All to win a prize that's probably, you know, wholesale cost roughly the same as the $5 asking price. I guess it's not a scam if you're having fun. And, well, <laughs> that's not wholly true, but... And I guess it's also a little bit less of a scam if you have kids and your kids are like, Mommy, I want to play the bear! And then you're like, well, $5 will shut them up. So, like, that's definitely worth something, I can admit. I went to Canada's Wonderland when I was like, uh, it, it's been around for a while, like I'm not that old, but Canada's Wonderland has been around since like the early 80s, and I went there when I was like uh, three or four, which was weird, because I was like the same person to an extent, I had the same uh, makeup when I was when I was three or four that I do today. So I, don't, I didn't really like roller coasters, I go on them now, because I'm a rational adult who wants my wife to be happy, but uh, I didn't have any of that pressure as a child, so I was like, sure, let's go to Canada's Wonderland. I just played in the arcade, like, the whole time. And now, I'm looking back, I'm like, man, that was probably a pretty expensive day for my parents for, like, basically no reason. We could have just done that at home. If they bought me, like, one Super Nintendo game, I would have been happier, and also, they would have spent less money, and I probably would have had a, a better experience. Like, I would have, maybe I would have played Demon's Crest, and then I would have the same feeling for it that Nick has for it. I don't know. Um... And also, they, apart from the, eh, this might be better than telepills. Uh, apart from the, the arcade, I also went on like a slide in the kids zone, because I was like, well, I'm not gonna go on a roller coaster. But a slide, you can, you go down, it's, it's exhilarating, right? Oh, you made it. Um, but when I got up the slide, I realized that there were actually many different kind of out points, so I had to choose the one that would actually lead me to my parents. Keep in mind, I was like four. I had to choose the one that would lead me to my parents, and um, I chose the wrong one, so when I got out, I was freaking out, I was like, oh my god, I'm at an amusement park alone, I'm gonna die, oh, this is what people have always warned me, blah, 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 and then eventually after screaming for like, you know, two or three minutes, my parents found me, thankfully, but I told Michael L. Fox the story, and he was like, that happened to me once when I was like six at Canada's Wonderland, and I just kept going up and down the slide, because I figured, you know, if I got lost, they're probably gonna look for me in the place that, uh, you know, they last saw me. I was like, it really illustrates, you know, that they're obviously, like, part of who you are as a person is learned, but part of it is, like, a little bit born into you as well. Because even as a youngster, he was, like, a little bit more adventurous, and I was like, I am fucked. <laughs> like, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just interesting, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, you know, these are all terrible, obviously, for fighting Mega Satan, but we'll take Mom's bra. Pop the Devil card, of course, as well. Just interesting is all, you know? I've, I've gotten a lot less anxious as I've grown up. Well, I've gotten anxious about different things. Now I'm not anxious about, like, you know, school. Oh, what if I get a freaking B- minus on my sixth grade science report? It doesn't matter. It's, it's meaningless. Um, but now it's like, what if I get a terminal illness that you... It only gets diagnosed, like, when it's already terminal. And then I'd leave, you know, my friends and family behind well before my time. And existential stuff. What if eternal life gets invented after I'm already dead? Yo, that's fucked up, dog. That's a real existential crisis. You know, back in the... Back in the freaking, like, 1600s, they'd be like, I don't want to die! You know, that's... That's a valid uh, fear to have. But now, you know, 
we're closing in on this like singularity the idea at least of the singularity type stuff I don't know if I fully buy it but it doesn't matter if I fully buy it because I'm not the one doing the freaking uh, science work on it right if it ends up working it doesn't matter if I buy it but um now it's like hey you know just keep yourself alive like another 80 years and maybe you'll live forever that's a huge incentive you know, previously, if you're alive in like the year 1850, you'd be like, well, you know, what? why would I not drink whiskey all day? You're just gonna die anyway. What does it matter if I die at 60 or 70, you know? But now, it's like, you know, you got a real incentive to take care of yourself, because you could actually live to be infinity years old. That's incredible to me. And also, like, very scary. Yo, sci fi is becoming reality, man. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's going to be an exciting time, though. That's for sure. That was a great run. Very easy run. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back. <laughs>